the Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. This is episode 23 of the Finding Florida Podcast on the Florida Podcast Network, Corona's impact on Florida's travel and tourism. Welcome to Finding Florida, the podcast that takes you from country to the coast. Join your tour guides and unlikely pair, city girl Jemmy and country boy Glenn, as they explore the amazing sights and sounds of the Sunshine State. Well, it's a great time to come to Florida. (laughs) We welcome everybody who wants... Oh, wait a minute. Not everybody. you're overseas, you can't come. (laughs) Not everybody. (laughs) You can still drive here, uh, but uh, and you know what? The parks, Jemmy, this is the emptiest time of year right now. You can come down and not wait in lines for anything. It's kind of like that that uh, final scene of Wally World. Uh, when, no, of you know what I mean? That movie where they get to Wally World and it's completely, yes. completely empty. It's what it's like all over Florida right now. Everyone is hunkered down and like... It's just something has really shifted in the last two, three days. I think with with Tom Hanks, um, with the NBA, everyone's mind well, with shift everything in the world getting canceled. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But you're right. The parks are empty. It's a great time to come on down. Just stay away from me. Stay away from so this me. Is a, this is a special episode. Uh, that we're doing just to get you caught up on where everything is for the Finding Florida podcast and Florida. (laughs) So both of them. (laughs) First, uh, we will have an episode coming out that we recorded a couple of weeks ago in Wellington, Florida, talking about the horse world in Florida. It was in full swing then, and now it's been canceled like everything else. But um, (laughs) it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Jemmy rode a horse. We went to some shows. We talked to some really cool people, and and we got to do carriage rides and all kinds of stuff. You're going to love hearing it. It'll be out this week. So we'll have a brand new travel episode episode out for you then today we're just going to talk a little bit about guess what the same thing everybody else is talking about (laughs) so an unprecedented thing happened and that is disney closed both parks in the united states uh closed disney world and disneyland and uh, the only other time i can remember that in my history and i've been alive for as long as they've been around is 9-11 was was there any other time nope i i think that's an official record on the books that at least at least i know for sure it hasn't happened since 9-11 but i'm pretty sure um that was the only time or at least one of the few times that the parks have closed and this is really it's, it's really strange and very weird but I mean, think about it. Disney, it attracts not only a ton of people, but people from well, all over last the year, world. 20 million visitors to Disney World. Wow. Yeah. And remember, they had just opened Star Wars World, and that was been packed. And then they just last week opened a brand new ride, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, over at Disney's Hollywood Studio. That just opened last week, and they spent a ton of money on that. <laughs> but uh, think about it. I mean, when you were in, I mean, parks are known for a lot of things. One of the things that big theme parks is known for are the lines and the crowds. Yeah. And right now, the key word to, I guess, mitigating the spread of this thing, of this corona, is social distancing. And it seems like Disney is the exact yeah. opposite of the kind of place yeah. where you can be socially distant. For, like, literally, it's a place that's, like, made to hug, made to high-five, made to... Like be on rides well, like to people. If they made you stand six feet from everybody else when you were in line, oh, forget it. Uh, you, oh my god, the line would extend fifteen times longer yes, than it actually right. already it's is, which would be twelve terrible. miles back. Terrible. So, and 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 if they're having the same kind of toilet paper shortage that the rest of us are having in the state, I don't want to be anywhere near a huge theme. No, that's how they're going to make up <laughs> revenue. I'm sure they. They have a whole warehouse full of toilet paper. They're selling on the street did on you, I-4. Did you they stock have stands up? on I-4. I did. Did you stock up? Yeah, I have a few. I did. Well, I should say, I didn't stock up like crazy because I think by the time I caught on that I probably should because everybody else is going crazy and stocking up and the shelves are going to be empty. It was a little bit too late for me. I mean, the shelves have been empty for at least a week by me, but... I had this moment of brilliance and I went to this corner store, this little, like, it's not even a gas station. There's no gas. It's just a corner store, like a typical, like, bodega. And he was sell- selling them in pairs. <laughs> each, each, each person was only allowed to buy two. It was kind of funny, but I got two extra rolls. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I said my there was gosh. a sign in Texas at a 
boot store that said, buy a pair of boots, get a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get enough medicine and stuff? Like if in case you yes. do get sick. To, yeah. I had actually yes. a client who um, she's a doctor and she's like, stock up on Sudafed and Advil and vitamin C and zinc and nasal spray. I'm like, slow down. I can't write this list down fast <laughs> enough. Absolutely well, insane. I just watched a report on people with chronic Lyme disease from a doctor who talked about it. And, you know, he basically said, uh, you all that have it like I do, uh, you got to be really careful. Yes. And, you know what he said? And I thought this was interesting. He said the best thing to help your immune system at a time like this to make it its strongest mm -hmm. is sleep. He said, if you get eight hours of sleep a night, that's the best thing you can do for your immune system. I believe it. It kind of it's yeah. when your your whole entire body resets. It's, sleep is really, truly the, the best thing for anything. And I have a feeling I'm going to be getting a little less sleep than normal over the next couple of weeks. Why? Why, Glenn? Ask me why. Because your child is going to be spending quality time with his mommy. Yay! Which means no afternoon cat naps for me. No more, no more. Yes, all the schools are closed in Florida. Now, I am so, so fortunate that I work from home. Like, I don't have to figure out a million different moving parts in order to accommodate my child suddenly being not able to go to school every day yeah. for two weeks. I can't even imagine. Like... Our day-to-day -day lives are being disrupted at every angle. In fact, I asked uh, on FPN Insiders, our Facebook group, well, it looks like all schools are closed in Florida. What are you going to do with the kiddos? And uh, we had a couple of members say a couple of funny things in honor. I have a feeling that a lot of people understand this sentiment. We have a friend in there named Honor Knight, and he wrote, stock up on tequila and hope for the best. <laughs> A lot of parents who are going to be doing that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and and our friend Paul in that group. Now, he has um, adult kids. He has grandkids. So he has, like, people coming in and out of his house of all ages. So he said that he basically double stacked, <laughs> double stacked toddler gates to keep everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you know, for single moms who work and I mean, and you know, if you're a waitress right now oh, and you're a single it. mom, you're really having ulcers you're because having ulcers. You know, restaurants or business are down and it's just, it's just, everybody is going to be affected by this in one way or another financially. There's I know. no question. I know. I know. And they, they giving some tips, you know, the, the whole point of this lockdown, whether it's, um, an imposed quarantine or self-imposed quarantine, like everyone kind of doing this whole social distancing thing is of course to just stop the spread of this. And, the sooner we do that, the better, especially here in Florida, because, I mean, Florida's economy really does truly rely on travel and tourism. Oh. And we want to make sure that people come back. So wash your hands, you know, do all the things. And we'll actually put a link to real tips from real professionals who know what they're actually talking about, not just two knuckleheads on that. Well, I like think you everybody's mean? heard it on TV a thousand times. That's probably so. true. That's but probably true. You yeah. were talking about the impact. So Disney's closed. SeaWorld's closed. Universal's closed. Legoland is closing. Thank God, because that's nothing but a germ factory. Um, <laughs> Crayola Experience location. What do you closed. mean? Kids, kids and families digging their hands into piles and piles yes. of tiny little plastic yes. bricks. I don't understand and the problem. <laughs> Every trampoline place and also that has those ball pits that kids oh, wallow around. Ball pits around are gross in. no matter what. I'm sorry. Coronavirus or not, keep your kids out of the... They're disgusting. They're so yeah, gross. I agree. <laughs> uh, Chuck E. Cheese is just going to have to close. Oh, they have to. <laughs> they have to. They and, and I'll be on record. I don't mind if they never reopen. <laughs> well, another thing that happens that brings a ton of money into the economy here every year this time, $76 million in Sarasota alone is spring training. There are 13 baseball right. spring training about ballparks that. across the state. 13 teams come here to spring train. For example, the Baltimore Orioles do their games in Sarasota and uh, they brought in 110,000 fans over spring training. Wow. And at first they were so, talking about doing things to empty arenas. Imagine playing a game without those hundred and some on thousand fans. Baseball has postponed for two weeks, but all of this is fluid. Wow. You know, yeah. next week we're, it's going to be a whole different story this week. Oh, see if it'll be better or worse, right? Glenn, so, I just uh, realized, crap, you when know. you said all of this is fluid, <gasps> What if he's home longer than two weeks? I love my son, but what if he's home longer than two weeks? <laughs> I would mentally start preparing for that now. 
<laughs> it is going to be a huge impact on on everything here. Well, and the other thing that's going on right now that I went oh during coronavirus, this is probably the most disgusting and most not space between people event, and that's spring break. Oh, so there is no space between college, them bodies. <laughs> no, there's, there's no room there's for the Lord touching. on those dance floors. There's a lot of touching going on there. <laughs> so and breathing and spitting, Ugh, and, kissing and touching and okay. But you know what? There's also a lot of alcohol, so maybe that'll kill it. <laughs> I don't uh, think it works that way. <laughs> but the, this is unprecedented. The may, mayor of Miami Beach uh, came on and said, uh, spring break is now canceled as of today. He's canceling wow. spring break. Now, I do they like have army trucks rounding him up and sending him <laughs> off to the border. <laughs> I'm imagining some big army. I'm imagining GI Joe dri- driving around and just tossing Ken's and Barbies into the back of the truck. Bikini clad Barbies into the truck. <laughs> Shipping them yeah, off. I think that's up how it works border. either. <laughs> You're in Georgia. You have them. <laughs> so what they did do to try and encourage them to leave <laughs> Because there's uh, enough disease going around that place on a normal basis. <laughs> and we're at the start of spring break. It's oh. you know, it, And it, the start of corona. Oh, God. This is just going to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> so they, um, they are canceling all of the events. All the parties, everything's been canceled. Right. So that's how they're trying to encourage them to leave. Plus, there's been another... I read an interesting article today. With the, all the people on spring break, all the kids down there in their second or third day in this week in the spring break, they get these messages that their schools are closing and they need to be out of their dorm rooms by Sunday. <sighs> so most of them had to hightail at home to pack up the crap to get it, out of their dorm rooms. It's just and a what's mess. happened with a lot with a lot of them is they don't have a place to go. Mm. You know, um, so they're going to be bunking with friends and you know they don't have families to go home to or whatever. And this is where they live. So it's it's just affecting everybody yeah. and even the drunken people on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sorry, but you can down as much alcohol as you want. It just doesn't work that way. It does not kill coronavirus, <laughs> and you can't douse your hands in in you know your beer. That doesn't Tequila. work either. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have a feeling that even though it it might stink for a couple of weeks comparatively across the state, like we probably have it better off than most people are going to have it. I mean, we're taking our horses out and you went with us there. We have this Island. We go ride and drive the pony on. You went with us once or twice. Yeah. And it's so beautiful, and there ain't nobody out there. So another day in paradise. Like, <laughs> and I'm going to ride my bike a lot because I can do that without touching people or being in their breathing space. Yes. So, yes. yeah, yes. it's yes. it's going to be an interesting time. And I, so we're still here. Finding Florida podcast is still around. Our travel is going to be a little bit interrupted now. Um, oh. So the next thing that was supposed to happen is I was supposed to go on a week long beach ride uh, from from top to bottom. I of know, the state of and Florida. I was so excited glenn about receiving the daily pictures that you promised to send me of you on the bike with the tassels on your handlebars i was looking forward to that i'm all disappointed now (laughs) man i had already planned the beach cam and all of that stuff but Mm. uh, it's gonna be the bikini will have to wait if spring break can wait glenn your bikini bike cam can wait (laughs) well we probably wouldn't have many people in our way that's true on the positive note that's true that's true so we're going to wrap this up look for a regular travel episode coming out shortly about the horses of wellington it was fun it was a lot of entertaining even if you're not into horses it was a good time we met some interesting people and it is it is its own world over in wellington not too far from jemmy because another great Uh, thing about being hunkered down is that you can still always enjoy a podcast so absolutely when it comes out you should take a listen yeah we have 23 episodes you can go back and listen to. And the nice thing about those episodes is it doesn't matter when you listen to them. They're not timely. You know, we did adventures and, and we talked about them and, and had a good time. And yeah. Jimmy was screaming. A so lot. go back to episode one and make your way through the back catalog. And technically, it's a lot more than 23 because there's you know, there's a 23A, the 22B, and a 16C. Yes. We probably have almost 50, don't <laughs> we? probably we? do. Uh, episodes out, yeah. If we were to na- so. number our, our episodes like normal people. That's but we are planning it. some travel if, if we're allowed to we're planning some new episodes coming up here in the summertime mm-hmm. and the fall so we're, we're not done we're still here and we're still going to be traveling when we can in the meantime we're going to be putting out episodes about the wacky things in florida so we're yeah. going to do that and please uh, share your wacky things in florida while all this is going on if people start descending into madness in your neighborhood please share pictures i saw this news report oh my gosh i was cackling on the floor laughing so hard this woman i 
I think they were parents. They were standing in line waiting to pick up their kids from school. And this woman had made like a DIY makeshift hazmat suit. Oh my God. It was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. And she was all serious. It was like one of those yellow, classic re- yellow raincoats. And she had taken like, like Publix bags or whatever and put them over her shoes. And that's what she thought was going to protect her from the coronavirus. So if you see anyone walking around in your streets in your neighborhood wearing a yellow raincoat and and plastic baggies on their feet to protect themselves from corona or whatever else please do share it we would love love to see it you can go to facebook and find our closed group called the fpn insiders and share your pics in there please it'd be hilarious we all need the pick-me-ups right now yeah you know what we have to be able to laugh a little bit i know this is a serious situation but you know humor does help stress it's interesting because one of the things the doctor said for lyme patients is humor is one of the things that will help you then i have a job where i'm supposed to be creating that so hopefully that helps uh we'll be back don't worry <laughs> we'll be back finding com for all your information and links and all that stuff uh jenny you guys i don't know time. when i'm gonna see you next <laughs> i don't know either i don't know either i need a a negative coronavirus test from you presented i need it signed sealed by a notary <laughs> <laughs> then you're allowed in my presence again <laughs> And then there's only one other thing I wanted to say today, and that's a congratulations, and you're not allowed to cut this out, uh, or, or we're divorced. Um, I need to congratulate Jemmy. We were at the second largest podcasting conference in the world or last week or in the country, and in front of a 1,000 people, they gave away three awards, and Jemmy got one of them, and she got the High Achiever Award for podcasting. So congratulations. You deserve it. Uh, you've been setting an example for a lot of people and working literally working your ass off at this for a couple of years and making and building a network and doing everything that you've done, helping us over at the Horse Radio Network too. Uh, so congratulations, and I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm giving you a virtual high fives because even if we were in person, I wouldn't be allowed to touch you. So That's everybody, right. wash, wash your hands, sneeze and cough into your, your, your sleeves, stay home, avoid other people for the foreseeable future, but uh, use our podcast to go on your own adventures virtually and we will talk to you guys next time and here's to your next florida adventure whenever that may be (laughs) never allowed to have one again (laughs) 